I'm Diana Whittington, and we're here for, I think that's our fifth, fifth paint party? Six. Six. Oh, wow. Okay. Our sixth paint party. Awesome. And thank you for joining us. Some of you come each time. Sometimes we have new people. And anyway, I'm glad that you're here with us tonight. We are doing a very colorful painting, one that I was kind of concerned about, but I think we'll be able to uh, make it work. Um, what I have is I went ahead and put some paints on. I used to use a paper plate or styrofoam plate. I like styrofoam better than paper, personally, uh, for paint because it won't soak through. But anyway, uh, I went ahead and put my colors on here that I'm going to use tonight. I did not put black on here yet, though. Um, actually, for my tree over there, I mixed a whole bunch of colors and added just a little touch of black. So we'll see what happens there. But um, I have, in the order that I'm going to put them on the canvas, I have violet, I have red, orange, and this is actually a hot orange. That's all I had was like a hot orange and yellow. And then I have this blue, which I'm going to make, try to make more turquoisey blue by adding some yellow to it. And I have a lot of white. And I'm going to start with the white. But beforehand, I want to make sure you've got brushes. I actually went off and forgot my brushes, but Tracy had them. And then when we're getting, doing in the um, clouds and the smaller things, she'll need smaller brushes for that. So I have an assortment of flat ones, and I have only one round brush, pointed brush, which this, that's the one I'm going to use for the little twigs and uh, tiny parts of the, the tree when we get that far. You need paper towels and a water cup canvas. Some people like to wear an apron. I just, what the heck. I don't wear one. I tend to get paint all over me anyway. And uh, don't need an easel. You can just have it laid flat if you prefer that. That's fine too. So whatever works. You may be able to see a windmill through this canvas. I put one coat of gesso over it. Um, I like to paint over canvases that I'm, you know, either didn't finish or I'm tired of or want to use again. And so I do gesso over them a lot of times. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start. I mean, this is Monday, it's the start of a new week. And this weather is crazy. Whoops, I got that in a little bit of red, so we have a little color in there probably. Um, yeah, it's, the way, it, it was so um, cloudy. I kept thinking you know, it was gonna rain. So I put off mowing and put off mowing and then finally I'm like, okay, well I'm gonna go mowing anyway. So I've got most of it done. Yes. Today is just too cold. I'm like, I'm not gonna mow today. Too cold out there. And if you get old paint like this apparently is, I got some globs. You know, acrylic paint, once it dries, it's there, it's dry. You can't reconstitute it. You cannot make it to where it will work for you again if it's dry. So, and sadly, if you have old acrylic paint that dried up, you just have to toss it, unless you can figure out something to do with it. Possibly. I kind of tap the edges, color this like this. And I think we've determined that since we are videoing these and since the videos are saved in, on Facebook Live, on uh, Diana's Paint Party page, and they're also on Watch Kansas website. Uh, what's, is it www? Yep, just what, you can just do it from watchkansas.com. Watch yes. watch and there's a watchkansas.com uh, website, Facebook, and YouTube. Awesome. And these are on the website, is that correct? They're on all of it. Oh, wonderful. Very good. You so, do an amazing job, and we absolutely love the fact that we can support you. Oh, well, I appreciate that very much. So, anyway, I have to pick a hair off. Sometimes brushes like to shed. Okay. Pick up the hair. The paint over that. So, anyway, yes, you can always find the videos either on the Diana's Paint Party Facebook page or the Watch Kansas Facebook page website. And what's the third thing you said? Website page. Okay. YouTube. YouTube. Oh, wow. You've got it covered. Okay. So, another thing that I sometimes forget to tell you. If you want to keep your brushes nice, please keep them. Um, I don't actually always clean them off right away because I might be using it again. And so, but you want to make sure it's in water so that it will not dry out while you're painting. Okay. Um, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start. I tried doing this with the lightest color and working my way over. Um, one rule in doing landscape paintings, you always want to start at the very back and work your way forward. Um, but it's a lot easier to darken a color than it is to lighten it. So I was doing it backwards and I started with the yellow and then I was trying to add in the other colors. 
and it just was not working. And that's one reason why I do these paintings ahead of time so that I can see what problems we'll run into. And so I uh, found that works a lot better to start with the darker color with the purple and I violet, whatever you call it. We're gonna start with the violet and we're gonna then work our way forward and build it that way. So let's start with your violet. If you do not have violet, as long as you have the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, you can make violet. But sometimes the violet is not gonna be real pretty. I'm just gonna show you real quick. If I take a little bit of this blue that I have here and a little bit of this red I have here and I mix this together, it's not a real pretty violet. It's really, really, really dark, for one thing. Let me show you, I'm gonna put it up here. Now it's mixing with the white, so it's, it's lightening up and it's looking kind of pretty, but I just wanted to show you, when you make your own violet, sometimes it does not come out as pretty as we'd like, and that's because if you have a very warm violet, I mean a, a warm red. So anyway, I don't know if you can tell from this, but you can actually see the red and the blue and where it blends to make purple, and it's kind of pretty now that it's mixed with the white. By itself, it doesn't look so good, it's really dark, but when you mix it in with the white, then it's kind of pretty. So if you don't have purple, by all means, you can just mix up your own. But as I was saying, sometimes it doesn't come out as pretty, it looks more grayish, and that's because maybe you have a very warm red, you know, more of an orangey red, and then maybe your blue is more of a, a greenish blue, and then those colors kind of clash and don't mix as well. So anyway, I'm just going to go along this outside edge along here and I'm going to go over about halfway, not quite so far, but about halfway with the violet. And my white, white is red, so it's mixing with the white. It's kind of light, but that's okay. I can always go back and darken it more if I want to. I actually like the skies not too dark because, I don't know, I think they're more colorful that way. So I'm blending this in, I'm bringing this down to the purple and it's going to come down along this edge. And now about halfway on the canvas, I'm gonna bring in, it's kind of like a triangle shape, like a splinter that comes in with the purple. So I'm gonna about a little bit lower than halfway, bring in kind of like a, a splinter. Okay, so I was just touching up my edges. So I did kind of like a triangle here. I'm not worried about the shape of it so much. And then I'm gonna come down just a little bit lower, about a couple fingers lower, and I'm gonna put another little spiky sideways spike here, like this. And then I'm gonna come down this bottom corner, there's a triangle that angles kind of up a little and fills up this corner. And like I said, these are kind of light because this wet paint is, you know, the, the white is pretty wet. So I'm just gonna leave that for now. I'm gonna blend some colors in there. Okay, so then, after I've done this, where the purple's gonna go, I wanna go ahead and start mixing in the red. And notice that it has like cotton candy is what it reminds me of. You have this like thing of cotton candy here. And this is kind of mixed with the violet. And then we have more than just plain red. And then we have like red and orange mixed together. And then we have just plain orange. And then you have like orange and yellow. And then you have yellow. So we're just kind of building with those colors like that. Uh, one thing that I like to do is to make sure that when I'm changing colors, I don't stir the brush in there because it gets the water all dirty and makes a mess. So I just usually dip the brush and just wipe it, and that gets it clean enough. So I'm going to go ahead and dip this in the red, and this is more of a warm red, so I'm going to mix it a little bit with the violet. So I've got red and violet here. And I'm just gonna take just a little block here, a little corner, kind of go maroon, uh, whatever, kind of just bumps across here, go straight, oh, it's not actually straight, don't worry, I mean it's ground, so it can be, oops, the brush fell apart. So it can be um, uneven, but it's just gonna kind of go across like this, fill it in a little more. And then where I have this little triangle that's lit off here, I'm gonna come down below it with this red. Now this painting, like I said, is kind of challenging because you're just gonna to have to figure out what colors you wanna put where and have fun with it. I mean, it kind of, kind of the way I ended up doing it because I was you know, like, ah, do I wanna to try to make it exactly? It's really hard to make things exactly like one that you're looking at. 
So now what I did is I jumped down a couple of fingers and yeah, I'm gonna bring some red here and pull this down. And this I'm gonna end up turning more orange, this bottom part. But I'm gonna put a little bit of red on it for right now. So I'm sloping that over there. So my concern is I have so much white on here. Now see, this is where I messed up because at home when I did this, I painted the white and then I had to do something and I kind of walked off a little bit. So the white was kind of dry by the time I got ready to paint on it, which changes the whole thing. So anyway, let's go back and try to add a little bit more red to this and make it darker. I'm just, I take my brush, I have a flat brush is what I'm using, it's only about an inch across I think, and I'm just kind of going, holding it flat and doing these little bumps, like scallops kind of, I'm pulling them down. And I'm going to eventually make it lighter on the edges, but it's kind of doing that already, But so then I need it darker down here. So if I put some purple maybe, maybe that'll work. We're back. What this is doing is giving you time to, to paint. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, oh, that's just ugly. I don't like that at all. I mixed uh, red and yellow and even with this fluorescent orange. Oh well. Oh well. As Bob Ross used to say, we have happy accidents. So we'll see if this is going to end up being a happy accident or not. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that around. And so this is, uh, so I have my red and violet, my red, my red and orange, and now I'm just gonna do plain orange. And that's just ugly, don't like that at all, but that's okay. I think it's good that you can see when I have problems because then you're like, oh, okay, everybody has problems with these things. Okay, so the next one, I'm gonna just use the plain orange, but like I said, this fluorescent orange is a bit much, so I, I don't know, I'm gonna try it. It's a bit, yeah, it's, it's pretty bright. We'll see. Let's throw this on here, like this. What I did too is, I don't know if you saw this, I took some yellow and that yellow gold and I kind of did a little swipe in this bare spot that I had. So there's a little bit of a, like the sun is shining and hitting that so you can bring that down and let it mix in. So you can see a lot of colors in there. I kind of like that. That's kind of pretty. I'm just not being able to get the dark colors for some reason. Okay, so once I have that, I still haven't done the yellow, orange, orange, I don't think. I have, doot, 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 I'm missing one. I think, I think. Let's see if I can get a color I like here. I want it more orange than yellow. And it's this big part right here, like a big fluffy cloud that goes like right in here. It's looking more gold than it is orange, but that's okay. I'm just doing this one different. <laughs> this one will be different. That's okay. Sometimes I like them better that way when they come out different than what I plan. So, okay, so I have that one. I have the kind of the gold down here. And then I'm going to put yellow in this main part. I'm going to wipe my brush off of it. And I'm going to take this yellow and I'm going to wipe it around. It's really bright, but we're going to lighten it up, add some highlights to it. And I'm going to put a little bit over here. This is like a little yellow cloud that escaped. And instead of it being fluffy on the right side, it's it's bumpy and fluffy on the left side, you know, like this, do these little swoops, like little curls, like you're doing a letter C, I guess you'd say. And so that's bumping around like that. But then on the right side where that yellow is, it's just gonna kind of fade. I'm gonna pull that out and let it fade. I'm gonna have a hair here. Get that off here. Pull that over, let that fade out. And I'll eventually mix in some uh, blue with that, make it kind of a greenish. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry a little bit so I can go in and darken this inner part of the clouds. I want that darker than the outer part, it's gonna be lighter. So I need to let that dry a little bit. So let's come down here and play with this a little. You can bring, wherever you have the bare spots, bring some yellow or lighter color along there. 
and then you can mix in like some darker red or some violet. And we want to make sure your brush strokes on here are horizontal for the land. It makes it look a little more, um, I don't know, realistic, I guess, if you're, but you don't want it all the same values. You want parts of it to be lighter, parts of it to be darker. And what that does is it creates depth and makes it look more interesting. So it looks like you've got areas that are closer, areas that are further away. I don't want it to look choppy though. And so one way I can keep it from looking choppy is when I do a brush stroke, if I start on one side and I bring it all the way over, or I lift it up like a plane leading the runway, kind of lift up like that, and it will help it to uh, not be choppy looking. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try adding some more purple to this section here, so let's see if I can make it darker. I want it to be a little darker. And blend this in. It's kind of a swoop. I think it's supposed to be a hill. And looking at the original painting that was posted, I think it looks kind of like a hill off in the distance. And so then this one here is like <clears throat> a flat area of land that kind of <clears throat> goes in front of it. And then here's a darker area, which maybe is a body of water. I'm not sure. You can mix some blue with it if you want. This little darker area here. And you know how sometimes uh, a lake will have uh, little coves that come back into it. And so that's what this could be down here too. This one at the very bottom corner, it might be a little cove of water. And then little fingers of land sticking out into it are the red, maybe it's red clay, I don't know. It's kind of abstract, which is kind of nice. I know um, I'm not <clears throat> really big into abstract. I've really not done much of it, but it's really kind of fun to do a painting where you're not worried about some, making something look exactly real and you know having fun with the colors because you can kind of just express let the colors express the feelings instead of trying to imitate something so that's the fun thing I think about doing more abstract paintings is you can just have fun with the colors pull them across let them blend together and it's really kind of cool to see how the different colors mix now this section here it's all kind of flat red and I want to have some variation. So I'm going to mix some purple over here and pull that in. And I'm taking this brush. I have a brush about an inch. It's about an inch um, wide. And I have a lot of colors on it too. I'm just kind of letting them mix on the canvas. But as I'm going, I'm like, if I start with it flat, then I'm pulling the brush and I'm, and I'm twisting it as I pull it across so that it goes from a fat line to a thin line just to add some interest to it is all. I'm gonna add some more purple down here. So anyway, just have fun with this part. We're just putting colors, breaking up the ground in different areas. So I like to imagine like, like I was saying, that this is like a hill off in the distance. This is a, you know, some land that kind of rolling off in the distance. And then like, this could be water. I'm gonna break this into more of a point here. This could be like a little, Cove coming in. And then we've got our slope that comes down into the water. I'll put a little more red onto that. I'm going to make that more orange, I think. I'll put some orange up here. Yeah, that's a nice orange. We'll pull that down. Put some here. And maybe this. So one thing, you don't want to just keep brushing colors together though, because depending on what colors you're doing, like for example, colors opposite each other, the color wheel, I had to get a color wheel, just stick it up here that we could, I could refer to it. But you have yellow at the top, I think, the color wheel, and you have the three primary, you know, the three primary colors of yellow, red, and, and blue. And if you do opposites on the color wheel, like opposite yellow is violet, and you mix those two together and it makes kind of a yucky grayish brown color. And if you mix orange and blue together, which are opposites, it makes a, kind of a, a yucky brown. And if you mix red and green, it makes also a brown. So you get all these different ways of making brown, but uh, sometimes you don't want them to be that way. Sometimes they look very muddy and, and dirty looking. So 
what I would suggest is you just keep doing the colors where you're going sideways and not brushing, you know, and blending them all together. We'll do more of that up here with the skies, blend that a little more with the skies. Okay, so, uh, let me see, I want to try to darken this up a little more. So I'm adding a little blue because it's a dark color. Put some red on that. Pull that across. That might be a little too dark, maybe. Let's try to add a little lighter area. Okay. Yeah, I think I got too much blue on there. I don't want all that blue in there, so I'm kind of playing with it. All right, so once you have kind of your ground just kind of blocked in, hopefully kind of how you want it, I'm going to put a little bit of, that's not on there, but I want to kind of put a little bit like this. Yellow, it works as a highlight. If you want something to kind of pop and, and stand out, you can put a little bit of yellow on it, and it usually kind of works as a highlight. So I liked it better before, so I'm going to stop so I don't mess it up anymore. Um, I do, it does look kind of choppy to me though, so I think I do need to kind of pull this across. And uh, you know, like I said, you can lift up on the brush to make it look like it's lifting off and, and not leaving lines where you don't want lines. Okay, so I have my ground kind of, I don't, I didn't do the uh, greenish parts, kind of turquoise green yet. I'm gonna save that for later. Um, I wanna go back in, I wanna darken up the right side of each of the colors of the clouds. So if I mess up my bumps on the right, that's okay. I can always go back and do it again. So I'm gonna do some violet and some red. And I'm gonna go on the inside part of this cloud in here and make this darker. I want that to be darker. And then I'm gonna try to kind of blend it to the outside of that cloud. I don't know if you can see that, but I kind of like that. I think that'll work. And I, since it's lighter already, I think I can kind of leave that. I might just go ahead and darken it up. So this one's going to be kind of dark right in here. And, yeah, I think I'm going to leave that like that. Because I, I wanted this little area here where this cloud's overlapping it. So in order for this cloud to show up well, it has to be pretty dark down in here. I could even go in and add some purple. Something like that to darken that little area. All right, it's not as dark as that one yet, but I think we're okay. So then the next one, I have just red. I'm kind of running out of some clean red here. So I'm gonna kind of try to darken up right where that goes into the orange. So the right side of the red cloud, I'm trying to darken it up a little. And I'm actually kind of pulling it out away from the cloud in front of it. And the thing about clouds is they have layers and layers and layers. So um, I can see depth to it now, but to me, I like the way this one's got the white highlights on it. I don't necessarily want them to be white, but I am gonna go in and add, let me try a little bit smaller brush. If your brush is too big, it may not let you uh, curve where you want it to. So now I have a brush that's a little bit smaller. In fact, this is an angled brush. It's got a little angle to it. It doesn't have to be, but it's kind of handy that way. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white and it should blend with this because I don't actually want it to look like white, but I'm gonna do some little bumpies here and have it kind of overlapping. So I want it right on the edge is where it's going to be lighter and then it's going to get darker. It's going to bleed backwards into the cloud to the right and then look more, uh, you know, fade, that ombre effect, I guess you call it, where it goes from really light to darker. And we can do some of that up here, I can put a little bit 
you could have it kind of come like this and come down. So you have layers of clouds, like so. So that'll be good. How are we doing? Anybody get comments or anything? I it's not letting me see a lot of comments at okay. this point. I'm doing ahead and I'm just straight recording on the iPad. Okay. And doing live on the phone so that way. We um, lost it. Yeah, if you guys are having problems keeping up with this, give me about two hours after this is done, and I will try to upload it, if not before 10, at least before midnight. Oh. All together. Do not sleep. <laughs> you know, you got to do what you got to do. I guess so. Well, I appreciate you doing this. It's really cool. I just feel bad that it's not working the way we wanted it to this week. Well, okay, so this color, like I said, it's just, I don't know, I don't like this orange. It's like, to me, it's almost like a burnt orange. But I'm going to use it, and it's going to come around, and it's, I want it darker on the right side of the cloud, and I'm going to try to pull it outward a little here, so it's darker, and it's going to get lighter. And one thing, like I said, this orange that I have is real transparent, and I don't care for transparent paint because it's, it's really hard to blend it, make it um, show. And I think it's just because it's fluorescent, is what I'm thinking. I don't like that white. Either. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a little bit of white to that transparent paint, though, and see if I can do a lighter orange that I'm going to put along here for a bit of a highlight. We'll see if this works. That's the thing I love about art, is like, it's, uh, you never quite master it. I think I've talked about that before. It's like, you know, I tell my students that. It's not like a video game where you play it and you beat it and then you go to have to go buy another video game because you're bored with it. Nope, not like that at all. Instead, it's something you're continually growing at and getting better at. And just when you think you've got it figured out, you run into a painting like this and it's like challenging. It's like, ah. All right. So I'm just going to have fun with it and kind of blend that around. Like I said, I don't really like that color, but it's going to work. We're going to leave it. And I'm going to bring some little bumpies around. So basically, I just lighten up the color, and I go on the left side. I do like these little bumpy scallop looking things. I don't know how else to explain it. Like kind of like you're doing, you know, little curly cues. All right, so I've got that. Now I've got just the plain orange. I think I don't know my colors are all messed up now ideally didn't work with my orange for this one because I the orange isn't working right but ideally you would have red with a little bit of violet or like a, a, a magenta color or maroon color so you have a you know darker red then you're gonna have just more of a plain red then you're gonna have red and orange then you have plain orange and then you're gonna do orange and yellow and then you're gonna do yellow so that's ideally how it should work, but mine didn't work that way. Let me see if I can just make it orange. Yes, I did. I, I, I dug again. What is? Oh, look what you found. I found vermilion and orange. Vermilion, orange is probably better than this? vermilion. Oh yeah, this should work. Okay, sorry. Thank you. I didn't dig deep enough before. I knew I had to have an orange Yay. somewhere. Well, I have an orange at home, but I didn't think it would. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I didn't well, realize this one was going to be obstinate. But I told you from the beginning, if you need a color holler, because I've got you probably got it. coming upstairs. Probably got it. And they're either Artist Loft or Golden. So this one is now turning more of an, an orange tea. Let me get that bigger brush out. Wipe this off. Okay, so I am... Cleaning my brush off a bit. I want to go in with this orange that she gave me. This is a little bit of a darker orange, but it'll be good, I think. I'm going to pull this around and make some little bumps, little scallops. One thing, you want to try to make them different sizes. If you do them all the same size, then it looks like, you know, little kids when they draw clouds and it's like, doo, 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 you know, the little, all the same. So try to make those little bumps and scallops all different sizes and distances. So I'm mixing in some of this. I want it darker on the right side, and then we're going to make it lighter on the left side. So I'm kind of pulling that out. The reason I switched to the bigger brush is I want to be able to smooth that out more because, like I said, that uh, orange paint was so transparent that it wasn't um, 
cover it very well. I could see through it. All right, so I got that. I'm going to switch back to the smaller one. This one's about a half inch size. And I'm going to mix some white with that orange color so that I have a lighter orange. And that's what I'm going to pull around on my edges. Pull around on my edge. I'm going to make little bumps here and there. Make a little, kind of like so. We could have it come in this way. I'm kind of not even looking at that now. I'm just having fun painting. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but you don't want it to look just like white lines bouncing around the outside, which is kind of what this looks like. So I want to kind of go in and blend that so that it fades from the white into the uh, orange color, the rest of the cloud, so that it's a gradual going from light to dark, just like uh, a dimmer switch. It's another example I like to use. If you don't know ombre, you know, I'm glad they came out with that ombre hairstyle, you know, where it just starts to light. I use that example a lot. Okay, this one was orange and yellow. And so now that I've got this better orange, I think it will work good with the yellow. And I'm gonna go back and paint some of this on here, making sure I've got a nice coating of it. And I'm not really worrying about the form of it. I'm just kind of, I wanna make sure I'm filling up most of the canvas with the clouds. I've got a little bit of space at the top right and a little bit of space in the middle here on the right. But the rest of it, I am just kind of filling it all in with my colors. And I'm going to let this kind of bleed too. It's going to swoop around and just kind of fade, fade up like this. Swoop and fade. Okay, so I've got this and I need to lighten the left side. So I'm going to take my white again and make a lighter color. This rose and probably that will work. Okay, so with this, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to bump, do my little bumpy bumps, and that mix with that red. If you mix it with a color you don't want on there, just wipe your brush off and just go back over it again. It should work. So there's red underneath there, so it's like blending with where I don't want it to. Let's try this. I think if I pull it in, it'll be okay. And we just keep doing this, keep bringing this around. So let me see, it looks like there's a line of clouds that kind of comes down like this. And then I'm just gonna pull that in, blend it in. I will say, if you've never worked with oil paints though, oil paints blend much better than acrylics do. Acrylics are a little harder to blend. And you have to have a very, I don't know, you have to be patient with them. One bad thing about acrylics though, it's good and it's bad. Good that they dry fast and it's good that they, I mean, it's bad that they dry fast too because if you're trying to blend things, Sometimes acrylics will dry before you're ready for them to dry, and, uh, and then you can't blend them anymore. So, all right, I'm gonna kind of wipe my brush off because I want to go in and add white to the edges of this yellow cloud, and I think my yellow is wet enough. Yeah, that's, it's wet enough. So I'm gonna go in here and I am dabbing and making some little lighter areas, and I'm gonna, Take my brush and kind of feather it and blend it. Oh, another thing too that's really good for blending, and I'll share this with you, is if you have fan brushes, and I have a few in here. I'm not using them though, because. But do you want me to take that? Yes. Yeah. Thank water. you. I appreciate that. Fan brushes are um, really cool for blending, and I read one of my heroes, uh, as far as artist. He's crazy though. <laughs> was Salvador Dali. And Salvador Dali is the artist who had that big, uh, like real thin mustache that, that came around. And the man was just, I think he was insane. But I read one of his books when I was in college and he talked about how he hooked a string up to his foot somehow and he would have his arm resting 
and he would shake his foot and he would have a fan brush and it would just slightly, just ever so slightly move the brush because he would hold it very still in his hand, but he was moving his foot, you know, shaking his foot. And it, that's how he blended, okay? And I was intrigued by that. This was when I was in college and I was just, you know, loved his work. And anyway, when I was a senior in college, I had the opportunity to go do my student teaching at the American School in London. And while I was in London, they had a Dada exhibit, which is a, you know, a movement, an art movement, and Salvador Dali's, some of his work was at this museum. And so I got to see it up close and personal. And I mean, I stood this close to his artwork and you could not see a brush stroke anywhere. It was amazing. And so when I saw it and saw how it was smooth as glass and it was blended beautifully, I thought, I thought back to that time where I read in his book how he explained how he did the, the blending. So whether he really did or whether he made that up, I don't know, but I just know in reality, his paintings were amazing how well blended. You could not see a brush stroke. You could not see anything. It was amazing. So anyway, that's my Salvador Dali story. All right, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I like to imagine that that's like a sun peeking through some clouds right there. So I'm gonna give it kind of a, a rounded feel right here. Kind of pull that around. And I'll try to leave that like a little a round area. And so I'm kind of liking all this, even though these colors are different than that. I basically have the same kind of thing. I've got, you know, the colors in the same spot. My colors are different, but that's okay. And I have it a little bit lighter. I have like a highlight on the left side where it, it uh, you know, is fluffy, the fluffy part. And so what that does by putting the highlight on that left side makes it stand out in front of the clouds that are behind it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some blue, but the blue that I have is not that turquoise blue. So if you have a blue like this, it is going to, I need to get some yellow. I will grab that. Okay. Let's see if I can see if you want. So I'm going to put some more yellow on here. And because uh, yellow and uh, blue, of course, make green. And if I want turquoise, so I'm gonna start with my blue. And I wanna to add too much because I don't want it to actually be green, but you know, turquoise is kind of like a, a bluish green, I guess you'd say. So what I'm adding a little bit here, and also the fact that we're gonna kind of paint over and into this yellow, so that will help turn it that way anyway. So I've got kind of a pretty turquoise color there. I'm gonna start with more of just the blue across the top. Oops, that's not just the blue. We'll start with more of the blue across the top here. And I want to make sure that I don't kill my cloud. So I'm gonna bring this down. Make sure you do your edges if you can. I'm bringing this around. So I gotta save myself that I can't reach very well. This is a little darker too than what I have on there because the white paint is dry, finally. <laughs> when I did that, I actually painted that towards the beginning of the painting. Whoops, kind of went over that, that's okay. And let me switch to a little bit bigger brush. So by having a little bit bigger brush, it'll be easier to get the paint on there quickly. Problem is I have a lot of orange on this brush, and if I leave the orange and then dip it in the blue, it's gonna turn kind of a yucky brown. So, okay, so I have this blue, just blue by itself. I'm gonna pull this in. I'm gonna use some water to kind of uh, have it bleed into this yellow part. Kind of lightly lock it in. And then I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of white too because it is a little bit lighter in places. Like this and Right up in here, I'm gonna fill in some blue here. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in there. Kind of blend that down a little. Now it has to actually blend into 
the clouds. And that's where you can run into problems because, you know, yellow, like I said, yellow and uh, blue make green, and so it's going to turn green in places. And if you're blending it into this orange down here, you have to be careful because yeah, blue and orange make kind of a yucky brown color. So, and I want to make this smooth, so I'm kind of making sure I go all the way across. Okay, so kind of like this bottom part, that's good. So now I'm going to work on kind of pulling it into, and I, I don't want a whole lot of blue on my, on my brush. I want to kind of just pull it into this yellow so that it kind of fades and turns into kind of a kind of a turquoisey color pulling it in and we're going to cover part of this with the tree so don't worry if this kind if this part kind of messes up you can just make your tree fatter no problem no big deal all right and so up here i want to add some white to my sky lighten this up just a little bit kind of pull this down remember i want to leave that little sun area Gonna be like a sun, and then it's kind of brushing apart. If you can see your brush strokes, sometimes you can use white paint to kind of blend things, thicken things up, and blend it out so it, so you can't see them as well. Or just let it dry. You can paint over it too sometimes. Okay, so I have that. I'm going to try to put a little bit of this. Oops, too much. Too much on my brush. Clean it off. I want to pull this down to where it's going to fade. It's going to come around like this. Here's my little sun area. So you can get creative and use other things too. If it is too dark and you don't want it that dark, you can take a paper towel and wipe over it and lift up some of that color. Or you can clean your brush off, which is kind of what I'm doing now, trying to clean the brush off. And then I'm using more of a clean brush and kind of pulling that color with more of a clean brush. I don't want the edge of this little sunny area to be fuzzy too much. I kind of look, look like a little cloud coming across here. Kind of. And then since I want it to be a little bit lighter there, I don't think that's going to work. That's kind of gross. Let me grab a clean paper towel. So I'll show you what you can do. If you have clean water, dip a clean paper towel, clean water, squeeze out the extra. And it works kind of like an eraser. You can just go in and kind of pull. Now, one problem is my yellow is not really dry yet. And since the yellow is not really dry, it's going to lift up probably more than I wanted it to. That's okay, because I can always go back over it with the yellow. But anyway, I'm going to kind of lift up some of this because it has a little more blue on there than I wanted it to. So now let me try going in and adding back some of that yellow. Let's see what happens. And it's going to, like I said, it's going to, yellow is pretty transparent, pretty light, so it's not going to turn that yellow yellow again. But it will be kind of a mixture. Pull that across. Ta-da! And it's going to fade into the blue sky. Kind of like so. So, like I said, the kind of nice thing about this part, too, is that since your tree is going to go kind of like right there, you're not going to see, if you're not real happy with this little section, I think probably this is probably the hardest part, is just trying to make this to where it's like, does this look real? Well, none of it looks real because I've never seen rainbow clouds, but anyway. Uh, but you can go in and add some white, and fluff that around, kind of blend it. And just have this kind of light area that feeds off of here. It's amazing what just taking some white and blending it in can do sometimes. I'm going to pull that across. Okay. And I think I'm going to leave that there. I kind of like that. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is we have this little triangle shape in the bottom corner and it's a sliver which I imagine it looks like kind of green grass. I'm actually going to turn my canvas so that I can get to it all and uh, I want to just paint this kind of a green color 
So there's several ways you can do it. You can either just paint it blue and then go back and paint yellow on top of it, or you can paint it yellow and then paint blue on top of it, whichever works best. Or you can mix it up on your can on your palette and do it that way. So I kind of like it to have a darker blue outline where it's going into that red part because it kind of creates a shadow that way. So I have a look the blue across there and then I'm mixing in some yellow and you can the more yellow you put on here the lighter green it's going to be so it just depends on how you want it to look so I've got that I did not paint all my edges sometimes what you can do too if it's easier you can just wait till you're all done and then just take one color you know like maybe black and go around and paint all your edges that way I see I got some red, a little red blob up here. I'll try to clean that off right here. Aha, works like a magic eraser, it's so cool. Okay, so once we have this part, we are ready for our tree. And that to me is the fun part. I love painting trees. I will show you my trick for doing trees. I did not do that one that way because I was just in a hurry and painting it real quick. But, um, I'll show you kind of a trick for painting trees, so I think it makes it easier. So, um, are we ready? I hope. All right, I'm gonna grab a little touch of black. Now, the painting that I was looking at, the tree was just solid black. And to me, black, black, black. There we go. Anyway, to me, if it's just solid black, it's a little bit too, much of a contrast, it's a little bit harsh. And so I like to just mix all the colors in my palette. Not necessarily, don't use white though because that would make it more gray. And um, I'm not using a whole lot of black, just a little bit of black. And to do the tree, I'm gonna use a flat brush, but not a very big flat brush. One trick when painting trees is to start small with your trunk, because you can always make it fatter. Because as you're going up a tree, the thing is, is that it's going to, um, there'll be places where you'll accidentally make it thicker, uh, where on a branch coming out or whatever, and in reality, a tree, the fattest part of that tree is, you know, at the base, at the bottom of the trunk. And so you want to make sure that as it's coming up and those branches are coming out, that they're getting thinner each time, a little bit shorter each time, so that mix a little bit more realistic. So I'm just gonna mix up the blue that I have and the orange that I have and the purple that I have left. I'm just kind of mixing all these colors. And I've got kind of a yucky grayish brown here because I put the yellow in there too and the red. It's one way to use up your paint, right? So now I'm gonna go in and mix some black with it. So it is gonna be a really dark color, but it's not actually just a flat black because it's got lots of colors mixed in with it. Okay. The bottom of my tree is going to go in this little section of the green here, the bottom. It's going to come up, and I'm going to show you, instead of the, the tree and the painting, it came up and it kind of just split off in different places, and it was mainly blowing to the left, and so then I started having the, the limbs kind of blow to the left. I thought, well, maybe that's the idea is that the wind's blowing. And it's, you know, I don't know. But anyway, um, but I want to show you a way that I used to do trees and teach kids, little kids even, how to do trees. You start like bringing up your trunk, and we're gonna bring our trunk up about halfway before we split it and put branches, okay? So, and this is actually looking brown. I kinda, to me it looks more real that way, but it's, it's your choice. You can make it black if you want. Okay, so I'm about three, four fingers from the edge. You can put it over more in the center if you want, however you wanna do it. But it's, Okay, so I've got my trunk down here. I'm just having it run off the bottom. It's coming up, and I have my brush flat. That's the thickness. It's about, I don't know, half inch maybe. Um, but it's wider at the bottom, the base of the trunk. You want your tree to be wider at the base. And then after you come up about halfway, then what I used to teach the kids, the little kids to do, and I even teach my high school kids to paint this way, just because, I mean, trees don't actually grow this way, but if you do this, they will look pretty realistic. 
Okay, so then you're going to split it in half, like you're sp a split hair. If you've ever seen a split hair under a microscope, you know that the hair, the thickness is still there, it just splits in half, so that you have half of that thickness over here, and you have half of that over here. This half of it's going to go over here, like this. Okay, and it's, the paint underneath is still wet, so that's why it's getting lighter. You can see how I'm going to create a highlight is what I'm going to do. And, um, which is fine. So I split that in half, and when I split that in half, it looks like a letter Y, right? One thing you do not want to do is, let me see if I can find my other plate. Oh, here we go. Let me use this one. All right. So when you are doing trees, do not bring it up like a rectangle, boop, like that, and then put a V on top because it's going to look choppy. The idea is that it's a little bit wider at the bottom, it swoops up, it gets a little thinner, and then it slides into these branches and looks kind of like a letter Y, right? Slides into that, and then each one of these is going to split in half, and so on. Okay, so when they split in half, each time they're actually getting a little bit thinner and a little bit shorter. So if you have a branch that is this wide right here, the widest part of this branch is going to be where it's going into the trunk. And the widest part of this branch is where it goes into the trunk of the tree. And then this one's going to split in half. And then this one's going to split in half. And when they split in half, they're going to get a little shorter each time and thinner. And I need to switch to a smaller brush, you know. And since these guys split in half, I'm going to bring it out a little bit further. This brush is a little stiffer, so it's like, since the paint underneath it is wet, it is um, making it lighter, but that's okay. It looks like a gray tree, I kind of like it. So the fattest part of this tree is, like we said, this very bottom base of the trunk. And so, if your branches get too fat, you have to go back and fatten up your trunk. All right, so I have this one split in half and this one split in half. Right. I used to actually teach kindergartners how to multiply this way. You start with one, you do one times two is two, and then two times two is four, and then four times two is eight. And so it's a really good way to teach little ones how to multiply by two. Okay, so and this is the little Okay, so we've got four branches. They're a little bit thinner, a little bit shorter. I switched to a little bit smaller brush. And now I'm going to split these in half. So this one's going to split in half, and this one's going to split in half, and this one's going to split in half, and so on. If it starts looking fuzzy, that's because you don't have your paints too dry or you don't have enough paint on your brush. So this one and this one. Next one over here. If it goes over the top of you know the clouds or sun, you want it to it's gonna bring that off the edge. All right. There's those two. Those could probably come out a little more. Okay, then we just keep doing that. So you are welcome to paint your tree that way where you just bring it up and start bringing branches off and stuff. Just be careful that you're not having, unless your branch is broken. I mean, you have trees with broken branches where they're hanging down. But ideally, the branches are going to be aiming towards either the outside or the top and not downward. And that's the weeping willow tree. And there's always, you know, exceptions. So anyway, I just keep doing this where I split each one of these in half. I'm using now this brush. You know how we talked about flat brushes? You can do a flat brush with the fat side or you can do the skinny side depending on how you hold it. And so now I'm holding it so that it's giving me a thinner line. And it's going to be shorter and thinner. How are we doing on time, Tracy? I have no idea. I oh, can't okay. Tell from either way. I can't tell. I don't know. All right. We've been about an hour. Okay. Well, we're doing good then. Yeah. So we split that one in half. One problem, sometimes you end up with a heart shape when you do a tree like this. It'll come around and it ends up with a heart in the center, which is kind of cool. But I, mean, I digress. 
we're going to keep going and it's just going to keep getting thinner and it's going to get thicker. The branches get shorter. I always love when people post their work later and we can go through and see their version. Of I know. Done. I hope everybody, we didn't have very many people post last week. Some people posted the next day, but I would hope. I'll tell you what I do. So, so you see how it's coming along and what I do, let me see. Then I take a little tiny one, either this is a little tiny flat brush, which I can use, or I have this little round brush. I don't have as much luck with round brushes because what happens is when I'm painting along with it, and I will show you. Um, I just realized that later this easel is up off the ground. That's weird. So my problem when I'm painting with a, a flat, I mean a round brush, is that I try to make a line all the same thickness. And if you put any pressure at all, it gets fat, skinny, fat, skinny, fat, skinny. And so I don't like that. So I find that I have better luck with flat brushes. And you can just press it and hold it and you get a much, whoops, I lied. <laughs> Sorry, it didn't work because I didn't have no paint on my brush. But you can just press it and hold it and to me get a better, and it jump there, get a more uh, solid line. Anyway, it feels that way. It may not look that way, but it feels that way to me. So I'm gonna, I've, like I said, I've got a skinnier one now. I'm using the skinny side of, of the brush, the, the flat side, sideways pulling these out. Now this uh, tree is kind of bare in the center as you can see. It's getting some little twigs out here but since I have this little formula I've been painting it with it's kind of stylized and it's kind of you know, it's bare in here. So what I would do in reality is I would go in I would put like a branch here. It's going to be a little wider where it comes up out of the thicker branch. These are going to split off put some little twigs on them, put a branch here, you know, oops, oh, do you see what I just did? I painted it over my, <laughs> I need to put a branch over here now because I just swooped over my sun. So we're going to do a branch here. And tree branches don't all just line up perfectly. They overlap all over the place. So please don't be afraid to overlap your tree branches. That's kind of the, it has, they have to do that to look realistic at all. I swooped over the sun, I didn't need to do that. So I'm just kind of putting some more branches in here and there. Okay, so after I do this a while, then I get bored and then I just start like painting. Oh, I think I need a branch here and I think I need a branch here. So I would suggest you do that. Wherever you have a bare spot, you can put a branch. The thing is though, you wanna end up with little tiny twigs at the end. You don't wanna end up with fat square branches unless it's been chopped off you know or if it broke off in that case it would look that way but otherwise it's going to end up with little tiny tweaks on the end so i think this is just about done all right anyway i want to do i don't like the way the look of that one there well i can bring it up one overlap <clears throat> so i think i'm going to stop with that I do see, you see how thick this is here? That to me looks thicker than my bottom down here. So I need to go back down and thicken up the bottom down here a little bit more so that it is thicker than this middle, this little triangle part right there. Do it like this. Ta-da! Okay, good enough. And I, like I said, I like it when it's not solid black. To me, it looks a little more, I don't know, soft, realistic. But if you want just pure black, that's fine too. And if it's, you know, you can do it however you wish. And uh, whatever colors you wish. This one has been like second runner up for like the last three weeks, this painting. So I hope, I know a lot of people said they were gonna paint it. I hope you have. I hope you found it challenging, but fun. And I hope you post your pictures of it, okay? So until next time, next Monday night, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.